Support Wrestle Talk. It's time to give some predictions for WWE Clash at the Castle, colon, Scotland. Mm. I am Luke Owen, D-A-D. I'm joined by Dan Layton. Welcome to the Rest Up Podcast. Please do press the thumbs up button, give us a little subscribe as well, and leave a comment down below with what you think will happen at this year's Clash at the Castle. Clash at the Castle. In, in Glasgow. Glasgow. Glasgow, not Glasgow, as uh, some of our Americans would have us think that it is said. Uh, so yeah, leave a comment down below with what you think will happen at the show. And while you're looking in the video description, why not sign up for Wrestle League? It is our online predictions platform where you can compete against us in your uh, Wrestle League predictions. I you think we're morons, or we could do better than they can. Prove it. Sign up for it. You compete against all of us. You compete against everyone else who signed up for it. There are thousands of people who compete for it for prizes mm. like Funhouse. There is a whole lot of fun and prizes to be won. Quite. So uh, get involved with that. It's a great laugh. Um, I'm on a bit of a roll. I actually would have had a clean sweep at Battlegrounds, mm. but I, the last minute just before I press submit, I changed my mind to Ethan Page, then press submit. Right. I was like, last minute. I was just. Yeah. I was like, I, I had just uh, did it, and I and I made a mistake. Eyes and up and down, Joe. I don't think anybody knew Kalani Jordan was going to get that belt. <laughs> oh, actually, that's true. Like, I got I got that uh, yeah. wrong as well. Um, I think I went for Soul Rooker. I had that like, one. Oh, I did Soul Rooker as well. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was that was more of a surefire thing. But yeah, so I got that wrong. You're absolutely right. And then I was, I don't know. I just thought of Ethan Page. I was like, oh, that's such a. Tr I I mean, I would do it. I would have too. I was the big thing I said in the review was it. It was a prime opportunity to do something a bit wild yeah that's yeah. what i thought i thought do something wild yeah uh, but yeah so i was wrong on that but anyway prove that you're better than us prove that you're smarter than us sign up for wrestle league today uh dan before we get into the predictions um thoughts on clash at the castle overall before we get into the show how do you feel the the build has been so i keep checking Ticketmaster in case they've decided to come to their senses and drop <laughs> those prices uh they won't but um i so to, to the point that i feel that it is very exciting still. I, I kind of still want to be there, you know. I, I, so so if, if anyone's part not of that aware, is because it's local. If anyone's not aware, it's like £300 a ticket. Yes, yeah. It's, for, it's for a the, lot of for, money. for the cheap seats. And I would obviously also have to travel to Glasgow, which is not awful. Americans would be like, oh, we do that every day for com our commute. Six hours, sure, whatever. But um, uh, yeah, so I, I, I have good vibes around the show. Um, this feels closer to Backlash than it did to... Uh, King and Queen of the Ring, where mm -hmm. I was a little bit like, sure, I don't really care about this one. Um, I'm, I'm intrigued for a few stories to come good here. Yeah, there are some things that I've, I've got my frustrations with. I wish they had done more to... I, I love Piper being the choice mm -hmm. for Bailey. I think, A, aside from the fact that she's Scottish, it's such a smart bit of business before she goes up against Nia Jax at SummerSlam. Yeah. Like, it's a really good... It's like a first test mm -hmm. for how you do against a much larger, a much bigger yeah. opponent than you before you then have to do the same thing against Nia Jax, mm. the queen of the ring. Like, I yeah. think that's a really, really good story to tell. I just wish they had given Piper some singles wins to build her up in, like... You know, I know they don't have rankings, but, you know, to, to make her yeah. feel like she is a world title contender. And the same thing with, um, with the Unholy Union. Yeah. Like, just not featuring them on TV and then just... Just by dint of them being from Glasgow, they get to be on the pay-per-view. I, I, I think you can do better than that. I think it's interesting that we've had, this is our third pay-per-view in the stretch of three, six weeks or so. Like, you know, my math on that isn't perfect. But we had Backlash France, then they had like a three-week build to uh, King and Queen, and then we had a three-week build to Clash, and then we're going to have a three-week build to Money in the Bank. I think that's not enough time to mm -hmm. really get, which, which is why actually the the Chad and Sammy story has been told over the course of two. That's why I'm more interested. Yeah. The Cody and AJ story has its feed, it has it has its sort of like seeds in backlash. So that's a slightly longer story. Exactly. AJ, not necessarily that they're going against each other. Cody had a match with Logan Paul, but AJ's been in the background being like, could I just get one more? Could I? There's and been he's, elements he's been doing of stuff it. on TV to get to that point. Exactly. Absolutely. Um, and and then Priest and McIntyre has been going for it. I think it's it's no surprise that the more successful feuds that we've seen on these various shows have been the ones that have had a slightly longer time to gestate. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's a tricky job, but it, it, this card more than any, I think, X X is a good example of that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, we'll start with one of those tag team, uh, one of those Scottish matches. It is a triple threat for the WWE Women's Tag Team Championships as champions Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill defend against the unholy union of Alba Fire and Isla Dawn and Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark. Uh, I 
think that Bianca and Jade mm -hmm. win here, and I think that they are pinning uh, either Baszler or Stark. I don't think that they're going to pin Fire or Dawn, for reasons I'll get into in a little bit, and I think that is why this is a triple threat. I agree. I think this is going to be a champs retaining thing. I'm really... Um, I, I really like the sort of quasi-resurgence of Shayna Baszler that I've seen over the past couple of months. Obviously, on NXT, she's you know, was uh, Lola Vice's second and then went into a feud with Lola Vice and had a, a, a not for me, but not awful match at NXT Underground um, at the Battleground show the other day. Um, and then on Raw elsewhere, Herb and Zoe sharing ge gear, mm -hmm. doing the little that I still yeah, yeah. can't get my head around. I've really liked their partnership. I really like, it feels like a resurgence of Shayna Baszler for me. It feels like someone who's allowing her to just sort of be her and be a bit brutal. What she did on Raw um, against Alba Fire, kind of like battering her arm about, mm -hmm. um, sold brilliantly by Alba Fire, which again shows what happened. These, these are good talents. You should use them better. Um, I just don't see anyone. This is This is a frustrating match for me. I, I it's frustrating thing, because yeah. of what I'm saying here about liking all of the talent in it and just wishing that they all got the opportunity to do that thing that we talk about, which is looking strong in defeat and actually doesn't matter if you necessarily... Someone needs to lose here. Like, even if it's Jaden and Bianca losing the title, someone needs to lose the match. So why not present them in such a way where it doesn't actually hurt them too much if they lose. Yeah, absolutely. And like, you know, you could make the argument of, well, maybe you do it as a triple threat match because Fire and Dawn can win the tag belts without Jade and Bianca mm -hmm. being pinned. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, then I definitely would have done more yes. to, to build them up uh, before you got to that point. Like, it's it's almost like a, a, it's a blessing and a curse to having the tag titles on Jade and Bianca. Mm -hmm. Like, it is completely the right thing to do because they are superstars uh, above most superstars, so you should be putting it, like, on them. But no one else feels at their level. Yeah. So them being them being the champions means that the tag titles are featured way more now than they were when mm -hmm. they were on the Kabuki Warriors or when they were on the, the Party, Party Girls. Girls or anything like that, or even when they were on Chelsea and Piper. But now no one is near them. Yeah. So, like, no matches that they have feel like, oh, this is the time they're going to lose the belts. The gulf between the champs and the division is so stark yeah. here, where in other divisions it's not that big. Um, it, it, it just is one of those weird things where, like, again, it's putting in the work yeah. and, and having them be seen as challengers. Because they can, because the talent is there. Absolutely. I, I actually wouldn't be surprised if the Unholy Union did get pinned here. Indian Candice lost... Uh, in Australia, um, there's, since it's a triple threat, you might not have to, but it's it's an odd one. But I do see either way, it's a, it's a retention for the champs. So I, the reason why I'm going with uh, Baszler and Stark is spoilers for the rest of my picks. I don't think any of the Scots are winning. Yes, okay. and so like maybe as a way to sort of not piss off the country too much, you don't pin everyone yeah, who's right. Scottish on the yeah. show. I mean, they're already going to be in a bad mood. They got to face Germany on Friday night. Well, I was going to say, yeah, they might be in a really bad yeah. mood uh, going into that match. And yeah, and you extortionate prices on the extortionate prices <laughs> making them very happy. You're, you're selling merchandise. Yeah, of like they're just doing like the the the, the Rangers shirts. <laughs> oh, that is a spicy like, choice. That is such a choice. Who did their research on that one? <laughs> <laughs> they just went to Rangers and be like, you're the most popular team. Right? Yeah. Yes, we are. Which is the one Drew likes? Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, for the <laughs> WWE Championship in an I Quit match, it's Cody Rhodes versus AJ Styles. Uh, I, I very much enjoyed the AJ fake retirement yeah. thing with the, the Mark Henry parody. I thought that was very good. Um, I, you know, seeing the WWE Championship defended on every pay-per-view is is a delightful sight to be uh, to be seen. Um, I've got Cody retaining here, but I think much like their Backlash match, because I thought their Backlash match was awesome mm -hmm. i think this one's going to be really really great plus it's an i quit match which means you get lots of grunting that's why i don't like it i'm not a fan of i quit matches um although on raw i feel like this must have been a slip of the tongue but on raw michael cole said uh that you have to keep your men down for the for the 10 count which is the last man standing match yeah but he said that's the rules of this match i feel like must have been a, a slip of the tongue but uh, i don't love i quit matches in, in general I do, however, love Cody Rhodes and AJ Styles. Mm -hmm. And Cody Rhodes being... That match at SummerSlam with Brock Lesnar where I felt like I was like, if I'm not careful, this feels like Cody Rhodes being absolutely obliterated and he's going to look cringe. Mm -hmm. And it's that thing. Of, is it, I worried it was going down the Fiend route and actually they managed to pull it back. So if anyone can make an I Quit match work for me, it's Cody and AJ. Yeah. So I'm intrigued to see what they do here. I think Cody's going to win it. I say, same here. I've got Cody down to retain 100%. Um, I mean, I'm looking forward to... <sighs> I don't quit. No. Yeah. 
uh, over and over again. I'm not looking forward to that. Oh, at all. Uh, for the... it's, like, it's like, I don't like uh, mukbangs. Oh, right, the eating Are they called that? I, 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 I just say the words that I read them. <laughs> but um, No, I think that is right. But yeah. I, I had to pause. It's just where people eat things the on camera. People, yeah. Right? yeah. I mean, I'm bad for it as well on these podcasts, where especially when we're doing live reactions and I want to <laughs> just have a little snack. But I don't like listening to... <laughs> we did the 10-hour one in the bank street. Pete just had a burger. Yeah. Like a full-on oh, meal. Love um, Sami Zayn uh, defends the Intercontinental Championship against Chad Gable, who will have all of Alpha Academy in his corner of Ota Sakuratazawa and Maxine Dupree. I, going into this, like when this match was first announced, I thought, I don't, I don't see Chad winning this belt. I think Sami retains. And I think part of that is because it doesn't feel like Sami's done anything with this belt since mm. he's won it. And, um, you know, if you're going to end Gunther's title reign, you should probably feel, have like a really good run with that belt afterwards to sort of make it feel like that, that that win was monumental. But I don't think they really have done much of that since he's won the belt. And I'm now looking at this Chad and Otis storyline. And I'm like, this is way hotter. I think you put the belt on Chad here mm. and actually kind of hope that there's a bit of an impetus for him to, to re-sign his contract if he hasn't already. Uh, or maybe even you do it as a reward for re-signing a contract and choosing uh, WWE over the lure of AEW and the money that they would have offered because there were people reportedly backstage at AEW pushing to sign Chad Gable, mm. as you would do. He's awesome. I think Chad is going to win here. My three-count prediction that I had was that one by one, the Academy leave. Mm -hmm. So Maxine's the first to walk. Tezawa then walks. And finally, Otis is the one who walks out. Mm. And as he's walking out, Chad Gable, plan B, the Creed brothers form, and they get in and they help him win instead. Interesting. I don't know how it's going to go down, but I am Chad Gable winning as well. I think I've now softened on that three count prediction because I think what you want to do is focus on where the story is hot. And that is Sammy and uh, that is Chad and Otis. Yeah. So while the Creed Brothers thing would be very, very cool and sort of like, you know, the, the, the drama of the walkout one by one, it, it certainly is what it is. I think Otis helping Chad win the belt is more dramatic mm. than Chad winning through other means. I actually would love to see Otis help Sammy, uh, help Chad win. I think the question becomes what's next for this storyline. And I, as I said on Raw Review yesterday, Sammy um, is done in this storyline, really. I think the next logical chapter of this storyline is about Chad and Otis specifically. Um, I think there's something interesting in the creeds and then alpha academy and they're they're at war ivy nile being included that so that you've got someone for maxine as well a former friend maybe i don't know there's there's a lot to sort of have a look at with that and i i think if if i'm if i'm booking it i've got sammy winning i think it oh, sorry chad winning because sammy is off to do new things I, I mentioned that at the end of his review his um i mentioned on the review at the end of his promo that he sort of insinuated he was about to talk about what was next looking beyond chad gable or whatever i think he might be someone you could slot into money in the bank uh, i know you're pretty set on drew mcintyre winning money in the bank and i think that's a really good shout but i also think that putting someone like Sami Zayn in there is another person who he's always been he, he, even pre-wrestlemania he was sort of on the cusp of mm -hmm. of that spot if you want to re-legitimize money in the bank there's someone who you could go with kind of thing um so yeah, either way, whenever I look at this match, I don't see Sami Zayn continuing with that belt. No. I think that I think using that belt for this storyline is far better if you put Chad Gable in there. Personally, I would have this be a moment of uh, Chad turning on Otis before Otis turns on him. Also, we've, we've had Otis fail mm. to get Chad winning the belt. We saw that at King and Queen in the Ring. So the next step of that is Chad does win with Otis's help. Or actually, like I tell you what else, the other thing is... Um, if Chad were to win and and he, he's the one who turns on Otis before Otis could turn on him, then you could do something along the lines of like, uh, Otis thought he was nothing without Chad Gable and now he is without Chad Gable. Ergo, he thinks he's nothing. And even though Sammy is removed from the storyline, he can still sort of pop up backstage and be like, no, dude, mm -hmm. you've got this. They can have a feud with the Creeds on the way to a potential Chad and uh, Otis match at a SummerSlam if you yeah. wanted to go there. I think um, I, 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 would, I would have this be a turning point completely new chapter it ha this has to be the next chapter yeah. of this story I'm, I'm with you on that one and i think otis chad for the ic title at SummerSlam, 
is the match that I would do. Yeah. Perhaps that is because I've still got sour grapes that the Alpha Academy were not on the summer yes, cast I, last yeah. year against the uh, the Viking Raiders. Yeah. I still think we were robbed of that. It mm. was the best storyline of the do last you know summer. What would suck? If Otis wins it off Chad Gable and then Chad Gable pulls a William Regal and was like, this was my last lesson. You can't <laughs> trust it. I knew it all along. I've been good this whole time. Uh, up next for the WWE Women's Championship, it is Bailey against Piper Niven. Piper Rook, obviously, uh, from the area, from Scotland. Um, I think Bailey retains here. I, again, I think this is good storytelling in terms of her having to overcome the monster in Piper Niven before mm-hmm. she has to face a different kind of monster, but this, almost the same sort of monster in Nia Jax yeah. uh, at Queen at SummerSlam. So I love that. Yeah. I wish that... I, I know Piper had a great promo on SmackDown, and we are recording this, you know, and posting this before this coming SmackDown. I think you could have done more with Piper as a singles person before just slaughtering into this match because she is from Scotland. Yeah, I feel like this has been very Route One, and I think that is unfortunate. I think the crowd on Friday like saw th- saw through it basically. I yeah, think th- I think the crowd that was on SmackDown. I know people were very down on the crowd for giving Piper the what treatment, but in fairness to that crowd, why would they? They haven't been given a reason to care otherwise. Mm. Yeah, because uh, because WWE have gone Route One of like, well, she's from Scotland, put her in the match. Because ultimately, it's it's that thing of like, who are you? Who are you? Like. We obviously know who Piper Niven is because she has been on the show. That's why I give them a little bit more credence than that I do with Alba Fire and Isla Dawn because they haven't been on the show as much, if at all. Whereas Piper Niven in this act with Chelsea Green, which is wildly entertaining, has it's been on the way show. Way better than I think anyone thought it was yeah. going to be. Yeah, and has had some good involvement in the Queen of the Ring. So she's sort of been present. She's been there. Um, but yes, I do agree that if you, if you know you want to go down that road, uh, start on the road earlier. And, yeah, and, and and it's it's. Again, I, don't, I don't think she's had a singles win like all year. Yeah, I. I, I, I don't know. About, I don't care. Like in a, in a funny way, uh, the singles win thing. I think there's a way to do it while she's in a tag team and not have it be like, oh, I'm, I'm going to do this on my own. I know what you're saying, and, and I and I think that's fair. But I I guess I'm more like make me a, a person that I want to be invested in. Um, and a way to do that is to give them singles wins. Yeah. But I also feel like they could have just done anything to um where, where Sami Zayn and Chad Gable where Cody Rhodes and AJ Styles have been sewn for a little period of time and we're talking about next chapters uh, I only see a next chapter for Bailey with, with the belt I don't see yeah. what Piper do- suddenly suddenly she's out then what like yeah and that's you need to create the illusion that it could go either way. Exactly, yeah. As opposed to just by whether it was Lena Vega or Backlash, yeah. as they, the, the live chat were pointing out to us on yesterday's episode of Raw. Just, oh, you're from the local area, so you're going to get a pop anyway. So we actually don't need to do anything it's, else it's on lazy. this one. I think it is a little bit. And like I think you're right. Like I think we've already looked, talking about Bailey versus Nia Jax, so this is a foregone conclusion. Mm-hmm. With that said, I think it's going to be a very good match. Yeah. Because I, I think, because Viper's awesome. Yeah. Like, she is awesome. And Bailey had, for my money, outside of all the gaga of the the bloodline, the best match at WrestleMania this year. Mm-hmm. I thought her and Eos guy was the best it match was. at WrestleMania this year that because they didn't have The Rock and all the pyro and ballyhoo around it. I thought the match was awesome. And I think she can do the same thing here. I think she'll be have a great, great match with this. I just want some respect on my girl Bailey. Because I think that she has been getting no respect from WWE. Not being put on any posters. It's time for a change. Mm-hmm. She is your women's champion. Show her some respect. Mm-hmm. And our main event for the World Heavyweight Championship is Damian Priest defending against Drew McIntyre. So Clash of the Castle in 2022. Drew walked in. We were all fairly confident that he was going to win the Universal Championship. Oh, how wrong we were when a debuting solo Sokoa cost him that match. Oh, oh, how wrong you were oh, specifically. Uh, very much so. That jam in the jar. I, I, sh- I should have won the championship and I very, very, I lost it very, very badly <laughs> uh, on that night. What a show that was though. And what night that was. I don't think he's winning here either. I love Ollie's pitch that he wins the title and he blows a kiss to CM Punk at ringside and he runs through the crowd. Mm-hmm. Like you do Money in the Bank 2011, but you're doing it here in Scotland in 2024. I love that. I also love the idea that he sets up for the Claymore and then someone in a hoodie grabs him by the leg and that's what costs him the match and that person is CM Punk. Mm. Drew loses again and he was screwed again and it just adds fuel to that fire of his character. And plus, 
I think Damien Priest needs something. Like he, I was since winning the belt, he had a match with Jey Uso, mm -hmm. and that's it. I think you, if you're gonna have him as a world champion, maybe do him, give him some substance before you take the belt off of him. Otherwise, what was the point of putting the belt on him? I don't feel like it's the, it's both the right time because Damien's doing nothing, but that's nothing of his fault. But also, I think there's more for the Drew character in not winning mm. than there is in winning. I. I've been wrong about this in the past because I did not see... Uh, I, I was like, I wouldn't have him have Priest cash in at WrestleMania. I don't think anyone did because WWE A lot had, of people did. Because WWE did nothing to indicate that he would because he wasn't doing anything on TV. But a lot of people's prediction was that it was going to happen. You spoke about it. The, the chat world spoke about it a lot. Whereas I was like, I just don't think I'd do it. Um, in hindsight, I don't think I'd have done it either. I would have done the... Oh, I, that's what I was going to do. The running out of time storyline. Um... Just because we're staring in the face of a new a new briefcase holder, so mm. I was like, you know, where would it go? <sighs> Both good choices, I think. The one Ollie's pitched and the one you've pitched. I kind of want to just see him win it and be the champion because I want to have, you know, Priest doesn't have the aura at this point. It's not necessarily his fault. He hasn't had anything, but I think whatever we do, we all know we're killing time until we get Drew and Punk. Mm -hmm. And I think Drew and Punk feels like a world championship feud in a way that priest and insert name here again talking about next chapters what is the next chapter i don't know what's well, him and gunther oh because it's SummerSlam coming up isn't yeah. it i'm more interested in oh yeah now, you, now you've now you've done it, now you've done it. <laughs> <laughs> about the cat amongst the pigeons oh, I? this I, but i like this i but like that, there being well, options that's exactly it this is why this is the match i'm most excited for on this show yeah because I do think it can go either way. Yeah. And either way is a good choice. Yeah. I, th I think that is credit to WWE in their booking of this story and the way that they've they've got this in this location. Mm. So it feels like both options. Drew winning is completely the right choice. Drew losing is also the right choice. And I think both of them just present wildly different, exciting options. And so I'm going in this match and I've got I'm a blues clue. Like I'm, mm. I'm, I can't watch this show live because I'm, I'm not in town. Um, I'm at a gig, so I am going to be avoiding everything, and I will probably watch this when I get home. I'm going to get home quite late. Mm -hmm. I've got to drive from Margate, okay, drive all the way back home. I'm not going to be back until like probably gone midnight. Mm. I think I You're may stay up and watch it. I don't. I, what I might do is just for, fast forward to the main events. Right. Like I may, do, and I'll catch up with the rest of it another time but I want to see this yeah. main event and I want to see it as, as cleanly as possible. I think, to think about the next chapter, what I was trying to get to was I could imagine a scene where Drew McIntyre, I, I like the idea of Drew McIntyre as champion feels like a main event yeah. now. Mm -hmm. And the Drew McIntyre versus Gunther feels like a main event that I really want to see in a way that with all due respect to Priest, I don't necessarily feel that way about him at the moment. And I think there's an interesting story to be told in Liv Morgan's revenge tour, splitting the Judgment Day apart, uh, going after Finn, going after Dominic, I don't know, whatever. There's another, there's a moment you can tell that story here. The splintering begins with him losing his belt and he's furious about it. Um, that almost is more interesting to me than... Because, because elsewhere, I think the other thing that's been holding Priest back is he hasn't felt like a world champion because he's been one foot in this pie and and, and it's it's to well, make my metaphors. Every week he basically just goes up to the, the Judgment Day backstage and be like, what is this group? Right, and, and I think that it's like time to move on from that. That said, um, it, it, you, could, you could make it, and you have made an incredibly compelling argument for what happens when you cost Drew. The championship, and and if I look, yeah, look yeah, is Punk doing it as well. And if I look forward and I see Gunther's gonna, a uh, Gunther potentially winning that world championship, it doesn't need to be Drew that he wins it off because then I'll feel like I've got a world champion. But that is two months worth of you know, and that and then Drew with briefcase beating Gunther with briefcase, you can do that in a way that is makes Drew the hypocrite that we all know he is, but also you know protects Gunther because Gunther hasn't lost fairly um if you want to move that title away i don't know there's 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 many choices and i think that's that is as i said right at the beginning to try and find a neat circle in this in this prediction show 
long-term storytelling is when you get you more effective mm -hmm. than three-week cycles. I think I think putting a little bit of planning and time into your women's division in the same way that you are doing that's getting me excited for potential outcomes of the Money in the Bank, of, of the world title match here, that's, you know... Have you got? Should be it. What is your official prediction? I'm going with Drew. I'm just gonna do. I'm just gonna go with Drew McIntyre. I personally like the idea of him running off into the Scottish crowd. It feels like a good way to end a show. Um, but um, oh, and the chaos. Yeah, the, <laughs> because because that crowd will will um, if Drew loses, we riot on Punk. You make Punk the biggest heel in Scotland. Yeah. They have to uh, get him to safety and uh, across Adrian's wall. Yeah. Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I mean, my official prediction is Priest. There's a Priest retention here. Uh, but it's the only one you and I differ on. Yeah. And I think that is quite exciting, particularly for a world title mm -hmm. picture. So yeah, what do you think? Let us know in the comments down below. Sign up for Wrestle League as well and get your predictions in. Uh, my Joker pick, by the way, I'm going with the, the women's tag. Yeah. Like, because... <laughs> Cody Rhodes would have been my other option because I don't think AJ's winning the belts. So those are my two choices I would have mm -hmm. for my Joker pick. Joker pick in WrestleLeague gives you double points. Yes. And if it's, yeah. you get two points anyway for a uh, title match, that means you get four points. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm going with the, the much safer Bel Air and Cargill or I'm going with Cody Rhodes. For balance, I'm going with Bailey. Oh, that's actually also a very good safe option, actually, yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyway, let us know in the comments down below what do you think is going to happen on the show. We'll be back tomorrow with the AEW Dynamite review, and then on Sunday, Sat, Eni, Angie, and Ollie Davis will be here in the studio reviewing Clash at the Castle and all of the fallout from there. And then you and I will be back on Tuesday mm -hmm. with all of the fallout from Clash at the Castle oh. and what the new landscape of Monday Night Raw looks like, which will probably have the debut of the White Six. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. They're yeah. likely to debut on that show, so we'll have all of that coming up here on the Wrestle Podcast channel, so make sure you do subscribe and enable notifications and all that good jazz. So we'll see you then. Take care, everyone. Uh, I've been the Cone, D-A-D. That has been Dan Layton. Jam that jam. <laughs>